Hey guys, welcome to another video. So for today's video, I'm going to be making some of the orders that I received during the past two weeks that me and Mario were in Cape Town. I already made some orders yesterday and the day before, so today's Wednesday. I really wanted to film most of them, but I couldn't get time to film and to make the orders. With load shedding and everything going on, I only have like three to four hours to use my embroidery machine because the rest of the time I have to digitize on my laptop if it's actually charged because it does take a little bit more time to film and to make the products. I didn't want to waste any time because I had a couple of orders that had to get out by a specific time. So I had to work on them yesterday and the day before. And this is actually what I worked on yesterday and the day before. Hopefully I'll be able to get some of the orders done today because load shedding is so bad at the moment. We are having stage five load shedding, which means that we don't have electricity in the house from 10 a.m to half past 12 and then again from six tonight until I think half past nine. I saw a picture of someone saying that people that's not in South Africa and don't understand what load shedding is, they think that we're having a festival and that the stages are actually, you know, the festival stages where the people are performing. That's so funny and sad at the same time. But I mean, we have to work with it and it's kind of a love-hate relationship we're having with load shedding because I'm struggling at the moment with getting all my work done. But Mario's business is all about backup systems and solar and everything. So, I mean, he's actually gaining a lot. My dad's business is also from our house. So he's downstairs and over there, they do have a little backup system that runs all of the computers and wi-fi and everything so fortunately i don't have a too big of a problem when i need to get digitizing done but my laptop usually do kind of stay full until our power comes back on so it's not that bad that's actually what i'm going to do now so yesterday and the day before that i had to use like the power time that we had for embroidering these logos for this business and it yeah it kept me busy for two two days i really wanted to it only took two days because we have load shedding we actually still had stage six load shedding on monday which means that we didn't have power from 12 to half past four which is pretty bad so i only had the morning time to get stuff done and it took an hour per overall that I had to embroider onto. So you can do the math, I had nine to do. And um, yeah, so I got everything done and he was very happy with his products. So I'm so happy about that as well. I'm gonna show you this is why I have to taste my products before I embroider them. Like the line drawings, I'm kind of comfortable with own, like starting immediately because I've done a lot of line drawings before. So I don't feel like I need to taste every single one. But this one, for instance, I just tasted on a denim material because the overalls are denim and I wanted to make sure that, you know, everything is fine. And this is how it came out. You can see that the, the bottom size of the font is just too small, so you can't actually see. I had to make bigger so that you'll be able to see it. And then he also just asked me to add the employees names at the bottom. So I did that as well. I am not going to be making a tutorial in this video about how I'm doing my line drawings, but if you want to see, comment down below and I will be happy to make one. I'm not sure when I'll be able to post it though, because I do have a bunch of other videos of my personal life that I need to upload as fast as I can because we already had some of the events that I am talking about in previous videos. But anyway, let us get started. So I have four frames, two A5 frames and two A4 frames to do. For the two A5 frames that I need to make or line drawings that I need to create, the client actually wants me to embroider it onto the paper that I use for my cards. So that's a little bit different, but we're going to try and do it. Sometimes if there's not too much detail, it can work out because the paper actually, you know, the needle goes through the paper and then the paper can maybe tear. So that's why I like to, when I make my cards, actually have pre-designed pictures that I know will come out looking the way that it should. And the A4 is just normal onto a piece of fabric that I can just embroider the line ring onto that. So I'm now just going to digitize it and then later on when we have power I will embroider it but that will be a little bit later. Um, I actually wanted to go to the gym maybe in the time that I don't have anything else to do but I'm going to be editing some videos and digitizing the stuff that I need to embroider and that's kind of all um, because I can't use my sewing machine or my embroidering machine. I can't make products but yeah. Anyway, 
So I'm going to start with that. I know I'm not in the shot at the moment, but I was just about to start with the digitizing. I just want to show you what I'm talking about when I'm saying the frames that I embroider. So this is one of them. Um, it's just a line drawing that I embroidered onto some fabric and then you can frame it. So it's actually a very nice gift to give someone. And this is the one that I made of me and Mario to show you from up close. So this is what it looks like. Um, it was actually the one, like the piece that I tested the line drawing onto before I put it on our hoodie. This is the one that I tested before I put it onto our sweatshirts that I bought for us. So before I started making the hoodies and the sweatshirts with the line drawings on them, you can go have a look on my Instagram page. I actually tried it out for me and Mario first. So I made us black hoodies and also the navy ones that I'm wearing now. So I'm going to show you how it looks. I really hope that you can see. There you go. So here is the sweatshirt that I made for us. It's a very old one. I think we've had it for a year and a half now. And then I just also add like the later with the hearts on the sleeves. And this frame that I've just shown you is how I tested it before I embroidered it onto the hoodie or the sweatshirt. And now to start, so I use Inkscape to do all of my digitizing work. I digitized this one two days ago. And let me just show you how it looks. How the picture looks so that's the picture and i digitized it like that so that's only the line drawing and she also just wants to add some scripture at the bottom and let me just show you the other one it is of a girl and her dog so that is the picture and then that is how the line drawing came out so that is also for the other a4 photo so the digitizing of those ones are actually done so i'm going to start with digitizing the new one and that is for an a5 so that's the photo that i'm going to be digitizing now and then there's also another photo that needs to be put onto a cushion cover so i will do that later as well so i'm just going to continue to digitize this one <laughs> Let me just quickly show you so this is how the line drawing came out i think it looks pretty cool now i'm just going to do the other photo this is the other one let me just quickly show you there you go so that's the line drawing is for the other a5 picture as well Okay, so the customer actually wanted the design to be in landscape, so I just need to change a little bit of it. So I'm basically just going to delete the bottom part. I just also quickly want to show you, I've added the scripture that she wanted. You can see that there's a lot of small detail going on, like especially for the buttons over there and their shoes. The fingers are also kind of a hard thing to like perfecting. Um, but yeah, so I'm kind of nervous about this one. It's kind of hard to let people understand that it's not a drawing. So you can't add too much detail. It's going to get embroidered and stitched out and the needle is only so thin and the thread as well. So you can't like, so for instance, her ring over there, I'm not sure that it's going to stitch out completely like that. It might just look like a little knot or something, especially also because it's going to be on paper. But I'm, I'm going to try it. And if it doesn't work, I'm just going to tell her that we're going to have to stitch it out on fabric. But let's try it. I mean, that's how you learn and that's how you get the hang of things. So everything is done and I just saved it in the correct file, which is a DST file that my machine can understand. So I'm going to use black thread and yeah, I think I'm going to start. Okay, let me quickly show you what I got. So I got one of these to cut out my paper that I'm going to embroider onto. I just want to show you, this is the size of an A4 frame. So that part over there. So I'm going to be using that to measure how big this piece of paper needs to be. I am not going to be shipping this. I just use this to take my pictures in so that I do have a frame to show 
the end results in so i'm going to take this out and now you can see that this is the size that i'm going to use i cut some stabilizer the size that i think the embroidery is going to be so you can see here that i'm just going to add it to the bottom of the, the paper so i have a slightly bigger size paper than an a4 because i would rather give it to her and then she will be able to cut it smaller or however to fit into an a5 frame but sometimes the frames are a little bit bigger or depending on what kind of frame you have i don't want to give her the exact a5 size of paper so the line drawing will be a5 but the paper will be bigger so i will just show you because this can't hoop into the size hoop that i have i need to use fabric because obviously the embroidery machine uses the arms to move the hoop so it's not the machine that's moving or the head that's moving it is actually the arms that's moving so your whole hoop is going to be moving according to the design and if you can't hoop something you won't be able to move it with the hoop if you understand what i mean so obviously it's gonna get stitched with everything but that's fine I'm going to add the stabilizer this one is going to be added over there okay i use a very small piece it doesn't have to be too secure so i just tape the sides just so that it doesn't move while it is getting embroidered i will also show you that before i start i just make sure that everything is centered correctly so now i'm just going to hoop this there you go i'm just checking the positioning Looks like it's in the middle, so I'm just going to start. Okay guys, so this is how it's looking at the moment. And as you can see, there are some small holes over there where the thread kind of goes through the paper and it doesn't stay on the surface of the paper because it is getting pulled through the paper. So it's kind of making a tear in the paper, if that makes sense. So I've sent a photo to the customer and now I'm just waiting for it to come back to me. Um, but I'm gonna continue embroidering. Maybe she likes it, maybe it's fine. Because I mean, if you look at it like that, it doesn't look too bad. But obviously it will look a little bit better when you embroider it onto fabric. But let's see what she says. So far, I mean, it looks kind of nice. So yeah, we will, I will get back to you on that now. Okay, yeah, so she actually replied just now and she said that she can see what I mean because I did warn her about that and she said no, she really wants me to try so I'm just basically, wait, let me just stop the embroidery process and then I can show you. So you can see that there's small little holes like over there for instance where it kind of pulls through the paper. So I am just going to stop it right there and then I'm just going to get fabric and just do everything on fabric so yeah anyway that's how you learn <laughs> okay guys this is how it turned out i didn't film the process because i was downstairs making myself something to eat so i came back and it was done with embroidering so i'm just going to cut off these jump stitches and then i will just cut it to the size of the a4 picture so i'm just going to get the second one going to unhoop this one as well and then i'm going to start and cut them this is my a5 and this is my a4 size and i just cut along the sides of the design So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut all of these 
jump stitches that you see over here and then i'm going to stick down the fabric to my stabilizer just so that it'll look better but i'm first also going to just iron everything and then it'll be all done This is how all of them came out. So I cut all of the jump stitches as you've just seen. That one and then this one. So tomorrow I will just continue with this. Okay, so it is the next day and I'm just going to finish these ones. So I've let the customers know that their orders are done and this customer is coming to collect her order tomorrow and then she is coming to collect her order this evening what i normally do is i use glue just normal glue and then i just like to glue the fabric down it also makes it easier to frame it so that is the final result for this one and i will show you how it looks in a frame just now i just quickly want to do all of them so this is how it will look when it's framed and i just added this piece inside there that came with the frame and i actually like how this looks this is the final product of this one i'm quickly going to put the other one in here as well here is the other one i really like how this one came out as well but unfortunately i can't frame the other ones i only have this size frame but you kind of get the idea i really hope that the tutorial helped you a lot thank you so much for watching the video and let me know if you liked it and if you would like to see more videos like this and then i will see you in the next one